All right. In this section, we're going to talk about functions. So we'll go over some basic definitions, then we'll work some problems, and then we'll get into those business applications. So a function has some pretty specific definitions, and I've got some examples here for us. Um, and we've got our rule right here. Each input, and we're usually used to calling that um, variable x, can have exactly one output, and we're used to calling that variable y. x and y, like I have there, can be called input or output. And then also, you sometimes you might see the input called the independent variable, and the output, output called the dependent variable. The input is usually what we start with by plugging in, so it's independent, and then the answer we get out, the y, is dependent on the x. Um, so that's why it's called the dependent variable. So let's look at some examples here. So in example A, if we look at 3 right here, 3 has two outputs. It gets sent to B and to C. You might want to think about that. Some people, it's a little bit easier to see. Think about it as an ordered pair. You don't have to, but an option. So this is what can't happen. We don't want three to have two different outputs, to have two different answers there, or those y values. So this thing is not a function. And that's because three has two outputs. We can only have one output. If you have any number besides one, it's not good. If we look at example B here, each one of these inputs only has one output. It doesn't matter to me about C here because C is an output. I care about those inputs. If we go back to that definition, the rule is each input can only have one output. There's, it doesn't start with the output. We look at those inputs because that's the definition, each input there. So this is a function. And that's because each input has exactly one output. All right, so instead of just looking at these little um, diagrams here, we can also think about these in terms of some like real life situations. So in these guys, we're going to um, see if it's a function or not. And if it's a function, we're going to figure out which one is the independent variable and which one is the dependent variable. So my first one here, a loan officer at a bank asks each applicant to provide his or her social security number on a loan application. So this is a function, and that's because each person, we're going to start, with, that's going to be my input there, only has one social security number. You can only be assigned one social security number if you have more than one. Um, something's gone wrong. Sometimes that's some like illegal activity there or you need to get that taken care of. So this is a function. So since it's a function, I can um, label the independent and dependent variables. The independent variable is the applicant, the person that's applying, and the dependent variable is the social security number. The applicant's gonna supply that social security number. And again, that is a function because each applicant only has one social security number. For B here, still in our same scenario, this time the loan officer is gonna ask the applicant for their credit card numbers. This guy is not a function. And that's because you are allowed to have more than one credit card. Um, you know, lots of people have more than one credit card. You might have one for gas. You might have one for your favorite clothing store. You know, you might have one that you travel with. So there you can have more than one um, at credit card. So this is not a function. And that's because each applicant can have more than one credit card. I know it doesn't say this, but I'm going to add it on here. The independent a variable would still be the applicant, and the dependent variable for this one 
would be the credit card number. The directions just said to do it for a function, but a little added bonus there. All right, so on the next page, I've got another one of these C here. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this one here. I've given it to you in forms of an equation and also some real life information, but think about if it's, if it's a function or not. And then also if you can tell me which one the independent variable is and the dependent variable. So go ahead and hit pause there. All right, hopefully you're back with us and you've thought about this one. This guy is a function and that's because each month is gonna give me a new balance on my loan. It can't give me two different balances. In April, I can't owe two different amounts. Um, there's only that one amount um, that my loan will be at in April. So this is a function. The independent variable is gonna be the one that's kind of inside the equation, what we think about being the x um, value. We use that y equals mx plus b, or x is with all those numbers over there, it's the slope. Um, so that's going to be the number of months. Or you might have just wrote n down there, and that's fine too. The dependent variable then is the other variable, and that's the balance of the loan. You might have just written B down there for that, and that's okay. So again, this is a function because each month only has one balance for that loan.